Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markway at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. Hello, this is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Malkwe of Living Streams bringing you Matters of Faith with Graphic Online. And uh, uh, this morning, I like to capture my thoughts with the words, three diets, which way? I'm, I'm really fascinated by events in the Bible and uh, some of the things that happen in the Bible. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm very fascinated by it because it teaches me life along principles, principles that will hold my head, make me hold my head up in all sorts of places and bring uh, excellence into my life. Now, are you aware that the, the people of Israel, in their journey, you get it from A to B, that is from bondage Egypt all the way to the promised land, they had three diets. They had three diets. That is, what they were feasting upon, what they, what they were feasting upon, what they were eating was just three things. Now, the Bible says in Egypt, if you remember, when they left Egypt, the first diet is the diet of Egypt. When they left Egypt and then they were on their way to the promised land, when they were going through the wilderness, they began to tell Moses that, listen, we had better diet in Egypt. And what was the diet in Egypt? Onions, lentils, garlic, and all sort of food. They said, we missed the onions. We missed, we missed the garlic. We missed the lentils of Egypt. Now, the diet in Egypt is a stinking, is, is a stinking diet. It's a diet of slavery. It's a diet that imposes slavery upon them. It's a diet that makes them celebrate slavery. So as slaves, as bondage, they were eating the stinking things of life. And that's the first diet. When we were, when we were without Christ, people without Christ or whatever it is, you get it. Your diet is a stinking diet. Onions and lentils and garlic. Let somebody eat garlic mixed with onions. Then come and stand in front of you. Wake up early in the morning. Come and stand in front of you and, and, and breathe upon you. Ha! Even if you are dead, you rise up and say, mm. So the garlic and the onions and the lentils are the stinking things. And sometimes you'll be very surprised. Even though Egypt is a place of bondage, is it the place of slavery? Egypt refers to our past when we did not know Christ and didn't know God. And Egypt is when we were bonded to these stinking things, we were, uh, stinking things of life. We used to feast on all the wrong things of life. I'm not saying onions and garlic are wrong. No, no, no. But I'm talking about the stinking, the stench. And that was exactly what they were feasting on. And so they were eating onions there, and you re realize that even after they had left Egypt and crossed the Red Sea, which is the typology of the blood, the Bible said they were still yearning for the food of Egypt. They were still craving for the things that are found in Egypt. They were still asking for the things that are in Egypt. They wanted the food of Egypt. They wanted to feast on it. They wanted to fellowship with the things in, in Egypt. That was their cry. Then the second diet is the diet in the wilderness that is manna and that diet manna means what is it so it's a diet of uncertainty and in the wilderness when god has brought us he brings us to a place where there's no certainty around us sometimes and god feeds us on uncertainty so you wake up in the morning what's going to happen next what's going to happen next what's going to happen next next so god feeds us on a diet of uncertainty and that's manna but in and, and that manner, you need to trust God every morning for it. So guess what? Uh, our walk with God is a, is a total uh, walk of trust for every day. Every new day brings new glories. Every new day glory unfolds. And our step-by-step -step walk with God, it becomes a step of faith. and becomes a, a step of trust. So we trust God. In the wilderness are all sorts of things. There are serpents, there are wild beasts, there, there's warfare and all those things. But we daily feast on trust and we daily feast on the manna. We are so dependent upon God. So you, you never have it, I mean, flowing. So sometimes it, it happens. The next day you have to believe God again. So your life is filled with everyday belief and trust in God. Everyday belief and trust in God. It is not a flow. It, it comes in bursts and fits. So it happens today, tomorrow. You have to. I mean, it, it, it can be. A, it's a lifelong thing. It's, it's something that that keeps going and going and going. That is the food of the wilderness. But realize this: in the wilderness, the emotion was circular. They were circulating around the around the same uh, um, mountain for all this while. 
So their motion was circular, and that is a motion of uncertainty, as a motion of this thing. They just keep going round and round and round and round and round the same mountain until God said, you have come past this mountain far enough. Turn this way, and then you're entering the promised land. So our diet is a diet of uncertainty. That's, there are things we don't know. God brings us to the place, and he's slowly, and the purpose of it, he's building day by day faith and trust in him. Day by day, faith by faith, trust and trust in him. And then the third uh, diet is uh, giant great big grapes. And this is how God described, that is the food of Canaan. That is the food of promise. And he said, it's a land flowing with milk and honey. Flowing with revelation, milk and honey. Honey is the revelatory word. God then brings you to a place where you begin to feast on revelation. And God gives you, and it's a constant flow. Lifted from one degree of glory to the other. No more secular motion. No more uncertainty. But the sureness of God's word becomes impactful in your life. The sureness of God's word becomes a reality in your life. You lift up from one degree of glory to the other. Revelation upon revelation. Step by step. Uh, here a little, there a little. So in the promised land, you have a flow of milk. And of honey. And honey is the revelatory word of God. Psalm 19. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise and simple. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, them much fine gold. Sweeter also as honey and the honeycomb. And the Bible says in First Samuel, the 13, chapter 14, the Bible says, When Jonathan dipped his rod in the honey and the rod touched his lips, his eyes were opened. So I'm talking about the revelatory word of God. Where God, in, in, in the next step, he begins to feed you the revelatory principles, revelatory word, something that flows in your life. And he cuts away the uncertainties with his sure word of revelation. You know one thing? He has brought you out of Egypt for sure, if you're born again. He's brought you out of Egypt for sure, if you're born again. Make sure you don't yearn and thirst for the onions, the lentils, and the garlic of Egypt. And he's brought you out of out of the wilderness, out of circular, out of uncertainty for sure. Make sure that you begin to reach out. God said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So make sure you're going for the proceeding word. You're going for a word that revelate that will build principles in you. Not just highfalutin words, but words that will build faith, build trust, and build and take you to the next level of your life. You have a choice to feast on these three diets. And the choice to feast on it is yours. I choose milk and honey. And a land flowing with great big grapes. Well, it's your choice too. That's all I can say. See you later.